Morning, Year 7, and welcome to Lesson 2 in our little unit about Buddhism. So last week, we should have looked at the story of the Buddha. And just as a quick review before we look at this week's title, The Four Noble Truths, starter on the screen. Make sure you go over these questions and understand what they mean. If you don't, then perhaps you should go back and have another look to make sure you do. So the Four Noble Truths, what are they? Four Noble Truths are a Buddhist belief or philosophy which dictates how they live their lives. And they are on the screen. Dukkha, Samudaya, Rhoda and Madja. I'm going to explain what those things mean uh, in a few moments. But first of all, I want you to watch this video where you're going to pause me. You're going to click on the link to watch the video while it's on. Write down anything you find interesting, anything perhaps you find confusing, and this can be confusing but it gives us some room to search or research and find out a bit more about. Right, so if you watch the video, it talks about the four noble truths. And I'm going to explain briefly what they mean before we look in a little bit more detail. So the philosophy is this, that in Buddhism, they believe that there is suffering. We can suffer. There is suffering in this world. So number one is dukkha, which means there is suffering in this world. Two, Samidaya, that suffering has a cause, and the cause of suffering comes from our craving for things, our need, our desire, our want uh, of material things. And in itself, that causes the suffering. So one, there is suffering. Two, there is a cause of suffering. Third one is in a road which says, the good news is, there is a way out of suffering. Suffering can be stopped. So we have suffering. Suffering is caused by desire. And the good news is there is a way out of suffering. What's the way out of suffering? Well, the way out of suffering is called Maja. And that is to follow the Eightfold Path. Now, at this point, don't worry too much about the Eightfold Path. That will be the basis of next week's lesson. But the Eightfold Path is something that Buddhists will do and uh, how they live their lives, if you think. So here's an example. This poor chap is in bed. He's poorly. He's suffering. Um, and he's hoping everything's going to be OK. And the doctor comes along and says, yes, there is a cause. And once we find out what the cause is, then we can fix it. So there you go. Number three, there is a cure. What do you think the cure is? Well, if you take the medicine, and in this story, the medicine is to follow the eightfold path. As I say, we shall be looking at that more closely next week. And on the next few slides, there is some examples about different ways we could apply the uh, four noble truths to everyday scenarios. There's one about an iPhone, there's one about school, there's one about an Xbox. So have a look, have a think, see if you can think about how the eightfold path would apply to that. And on this last screen, Here's some tasks that I want you to write down. Think of one example of suffering in your life. How does craving cause this suffering? Remember, craving means desire or want or need. If you're not sure, perhaps you could look it up. How would it be possible to stop this craving? Can you imagine life without this craving? How could you stop it? Craving is the thing that causes the suffering. And then it says the Eightfold Path may help. Well, we'll look at that in more detail. We will in next week's lesson. But there's no harm in looking ahead to find out what that means. And then perhaps as an extension, if you were the one to set the eightfold path, what two rules might you put in to that pathway? I'm going to live my life in this way and this way to ensure that the craving stops and therefore the suffering stops. OK, I hope that's not too complicated. It will all become clear if you work through it. And um, next week we shall look at the eightfold path. So have fun with this one. And. See you next time.